2 Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Amen. Second Chronicles 32, 7 and 8. Let us read together, please. Let's read. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria nor for all the multitude that is with him. For there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Notice especially verse 8 says, With him is an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. And if you would, many of you probably know this second passage from the New Testament by heart. But I'm going to turn to it, Romans, amen, 8, 31, Romans 8 and 31, and it reads, what shall we, we then say to these things, if God be for us? Who can be against us? Amen. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, let's, let's focus our thoughts on this subject today. Amen. Amen. Heaven's, heaven's help. For hellish times. Heaven's help. For hellish times. Amen. Heaven's help. For hellish times. Amen. Glory to God. Heaven's help. Glory to God. We can get help, you know. We can get help. Heaven has help available for us. For the hellish times. For the times of high pressure. For the times when it doesn't seem worth it. For the times of confusion. For the times when uh, we, we get hit by friendly fire for the times of emotional and mental crisis. Amen. Heaven has help. And the last thing we need to do is come to the, our Father's house and fake it before him like we never really need help. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, they're, they're the classic thing for some churchgoers is to just come and, 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 and sit like, I, my world is never bothered, you know. And, and I, I see you going through, uh, but, but me, I don't, we, all the rest of us know better than that. Amen. If you're in this world, maybe you, you, you hell going to puke up on you. And, and it ain't because you're unsaved. It ain't because you're living wrong. Uh, that's just the way of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And uh, th this, folk, this, this chapter focuses on uh, a great work of King Hezekiah. Hezekiah was preceded by his daddy, Ahaz. Now, Ahaz was something else. 
Now, before I, describe, before I fail in describing him, turn with me quickly to chapter 28, and I'll read verses 22 through 25. 2 Chronicles 28, 22 through 25, and I'm going to go on and read it. I ain't going to wait for you to find it. Just make a note. And in the time of his distress, did he yet trespass more against the Lord? This is that king Ahaz. For he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, because the gods of the kings of Syria help him, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God. And cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God. And shut up the doors of the house of God. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And, every, and in several city of Judah. He made high places to burn incense unto other gods. And provoked to anger the Lord God of his father. Ahaz messed things up. Amen. He was a wicked ruler. And he led Israel away from God. Amen. Are, are we communicating? He led them away. Why? How? By tolerating gods of other people. By, by tearing down, by taking the holy things out of the temple and cutting them up and sacrificing them to God by, by, by rather, than, rather than observing the central worship in Jerusalem, he decentralized worship and set up, set up high places in every corner of Judah. He messed Judah up. Amen. He was wicked. Are we communicating? Do, are those verses enough for you to get an idea of how Ahaz was? Or do I need to find some more? That's enough? Because y'all acting kind of sleepy. <laughs> Ahaz failed God. Young people, you got to know. There's a big difference between being a Christian who fails sometimes and being a Christian who blends, who worships other gods along with your God. You can be that Christian who fails sometimes and get back up on your feet. But if you start fooling around bringing other worships in with your Christianity, I'm telling you, what will happen is you'll be left with the other gods because the God you serve will leave you. I know people trying to find comfortable blends. Amen. Trying to, trying to, trying to uh, um, blend Christianity with a little bit of this. And Christianity with a little bit of that. No, 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 no. If we got to blend it with anything, we are indeed saying that the cross of Christ was not sufficient. We needed the cross of Christ plus 10 loops. The cross of Christ plus a partridge in a pear tree. Amen? Amen. It, it, is, it is critical. It has tore up the country because he indulged the worship. And he not only did he indulge the worship, he participated. He said, if I, if I worship the gods of Syria, they'll help me. Amen. He didn't just indulge the people of the country doing it. He got involved in it. Oh, boy. Amen. So Ahaz was exceedingly corrupt. And Hezekiah, Ahaz's son, 
makes a significant turnabout. Thank the Lord. But even Hezekiah <laughs> had to stumble before he got sense. Amen. Amen. I know there's a purpose to all of this. Amen. Now, heads out, before I get into talking about all this wonderful thing, all the wonderful things that are recorded in 2 Chronicles, let me take you back to 2 Kings and show you where Hezekiah stumbled. Amen. And that's not to bash him. We're going to learn something from that. Amen. Look at 2 Kings chapter 18. And we're going to read verses 13 through 16. 2 Kings chapter 18. Verses 13 through 16. Here it reads. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me or leave me alone. That which thou puttest on me I will bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. That was what the king told him he had to pay. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Amen. Couple quick things. Hezekiah mimicked what he saw his daddy do. I just read it. That's why you can't just Tell your children be good and you do what you want to do. And the second thing is this. Hezekiah had to learn that any way you angle evil is still evil. Hear me today. Evil, sometimes evil people will try to come to you acting like they're friendly, acting like they have your interest at heart, amen, because they want you to put your guard down. But any which way you turn evil is still learn that lesson or you'll keep trying to make evil people your friends. You got to get to the place where you are okay with certain people not being your friends. You may not see it now, but you are better off with certain people not being your friends. Hear me, young people and grown people. Hezekiah had to stumble. He had to try to please a, a Sennacherib and realize that it didn't do him any good. Then Hezekiah got some God sense and he started doing things God's way alone. Amen. Important for us to see that because sometimes we, we, we are very not understanding of saints who make bad decisions about who they trust. Amen. Well, I don't know. I, how many of us can truly say everybody we trusted 
deserved our trust. Can you truly say everybody you thought was okay turned out to be okay? No. And that's why, young people, when we shout out warnings to you, we are not shouting to be difficult. We are shouting because we, wear, we bear the scars. Of being hurt by folk who meant you no good. Amen. But Hezekiah learned his lesson. So I'm going to go kind of fast now. In chapter 29, Hezekiah reopens the temple. Amen. You can read it all for yourself. But in chapter 29, he reopens the temple. He has it cleansed. Amen. And he has it reconsecrated. Amen. 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 Now it is mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him to serve him, that ye should minister unto him and burn incense. Amen. He had to encourage the priest to go back and clean up the temple. Amen. He reopens the temple and that it had been so desecrated that it took them a while to clean all the filth out of the temple. To make it acceptable in the sight of the Lord. That's another day, another way. Now, chapter 30. He reinstates the Passover. Amen. Why is that important? Amen. The people were, were zealous about celebrating the, um, the, the Passover. But it was the priest who had got, become disillusioned. Amen. <laughs> It was actually the excitement of the people that stimulated the priest to get back on the job. Amen. 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 That's important in so many ways. Let me simply say, amen, that it isn't, that it isn't always the, the people in ministry who will bless you. It is often you who will bless people in ministry. Because when you seem excited, when you seem like you're ready to go forth, that stimulates people in ministry who may be kind of disillusioned. How we communicate? That's really important. Amen. Amen. So the common folk had to lead the Levites. And then in chapter 31, uh, Hezekiah restores worship in the temple. Amen. 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 And that included offerings and tithing. He restored these practices in the temple. Amen. Moreover, verse 4 reads in chapter 31, Moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and of the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of God. Amen. 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 He goes on to say, And as soon as the commandment, came abroad, the children of Israel brought an abundance of first fruits of corn, wine, oil, honey, and all of the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. And concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the cities of Judah, they also brought in tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the Lord their God and laid them by heaps. Amen. They were excited to bring God what he said. Amen. Amen. Giving back to the Lord ought to be one of the most exciting things we are blessed to do. It ought never be viewed as a chore. It ought never be viewed as, well, I really don't want to do this. I want to do something else. It ought always be viewed as, Lord, I thank you that I'm able to Honor you by bringing back to you what you have asked. Thank you for fixing it so after I give you what you ask, I still got the vast majority of my resources to do whatever I need to do for myself. The old song said, you can't be God-given. 
no matter how you try. So here in, in chapters 29 through 31, we see some major things happening. Amen? Amen. And, and wrap up chapter 31. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of the Lord and in the law and in the commandments to seek God's face, he did it with all his heart and prospered. That's chapter, that's chapter 31, verses 20 and 21. He did it with all his heart, and he prospered. Well, doing well in the Lord not only gets God's attention, it also gets Satan's attention. Yeah, we had to meet it a matter now. Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't see Satan messing up too much with Hezekiah while he was doing all, them str all that struggling and trying to get the Levites to do the right thing and trying to get people stimulated and getting the, the, the temple cleaned back out and, and, and getting the folk, get, uh, reinstating Passover. And that was hard work. But once Hezekiah got everything back in shape, the devil saw him as a threat. Amen. Amen. And let me let me just, just go on and throw this out there. Amen. When you bum from the around and you can't, you can't, you don't know which way you're gonna go, you don't know how things are gonna work out, and, and you're just confused and you're stumbling over yourself, the enemy ain't gonna mess with you too much. But if you would listen to God and God gives you instructions and you put reestablish some godly order in your life glory to God the devil can't stand it when you start doing when things start going well with you in the Lord in your home in your marriage in your health whatever it is and while the Lord is blessing the devil will devise ways to come after the people of God. Hear me today now. He looks for ways. So I'm telling you, when things are going well, I ain't telling you to get scared, but I'm telling you, to, you better realize you're doing well in the Lord is, is an invitation almost. Because the devil can't stand to see God's folk prosper. Judah was getting her head screwed back on right, doing things right, worshiping right, honoring God right, casting out all foreign gods, cleaning up their system of worship. And the devil couldn't stand it. So what did the devil do? Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> After these things, this, I'm in chapter 32 now, verse 1 following, verses 1 following. After these things the, and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. Doesn't that sound like the devil? The Lord blesses you and establishes you and the devil says, I'm going to get that for me. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, Hezekiah, he, Hezekiah, took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains, which were without the city, and they did help him. Amen. In other words, ain't no sense in us providing water for our enemy. It was strategic. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Also, he strengthened himself and built up the walls that were broken and raised up to the towers 
and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city and spake comfortably to them. He spake encouragingly to them, saying, be strong and courageous. Be not a, afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for the multitude that is with him. The problem is big. Your foes are numerous. Those who are against you are formidable. Glory to God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Somebody needs this more than you need to hear about the manger today. Glory to God. Amen. He said, he said, uh, don't let the sides of the enemy intimidate you. Oh, man. Then he gives them a reason. He says, for there be more with us than with him. Now, what in the world could Hezekiah possibly be speaking of? He talking about little Judah, big old Assyria, that already took over the northern kingdom, which was the ten tribes, invading the southern kingdom, the two tribes. And he is in Jerusalem, the city capital city of the southern kingdom. Glory to God. And Hezekiah saying there'll be more with us than with him. Ooh. Sometimes you got to see with your spiritual eyes. You cannot rely on the natural eye because the natural eye will get you depressed. The natural eye will make you feel like quitting. The natural eye will make you throw up your hand. But that's why you got to back up sometimes and seek the face of God so he can encourage you. So Hezekiah said, there'll be more with us. Somebody minister to yourself, just say, there are more with me. Now y'all said that, I will be obedience. Now minister to yourself. Tell your spirit, there are more with me. There are more with me. You can see your physical enemies. You can see folk who are orchestrating your downfall. You can see folk who get so blatant till they hit you and they don't mind showing you that they don't hit you. But you got to remind yourself. Glory to God. There'll be more with us. Woo. Man, I ain't going to stay there because I need to hurry toward the end. Amen. He said, uh, with him is an arm of flesh. Y'all see people. With him is the arm of flesh. With him are the numbers. The host coming against you. You see a great host. You see more foes coming at you on horseback and in chariots than we got people in the city. But with us is the Lord our God to help us. Glory to God. And to fight our battles. Somebody said, Lord, fight for me. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm frustrated. I'm beat down. I'm disillusioned. I don't know whether I'm going or coming. Lord, fight for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, fight for me. And the people rested themselves. Upon the words of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. He was doing well. Amen. But the people decided. We're going to believe God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? 
Amen. You got to have a resolve. You got to have something fixed in your spirit. Amen. Doing, doing well by God is going to draw Satan's attention. But you got to have it fixed in your spirit. There's more with me than there is with my enemy. Y'all hear what I'm saying? There is more with me. Amen. And I know sometimes when your enemy comes against you, it hurts you. Amen. Because you don't expect to get hurt from the people and through the means through which you get hurt. Amen. You don't expect certain things to come from certain people. Especially people you've tried to walk with and people you've tried to love and people you've tried to share with and people you've tried to encourage. You just don't expect the dagger to come out of their hands. Amen. But let me tell you something, baby. You got to be all right with whoever your enemy is. Amen. And be even more all right with who your God is. Glory to God. I might have to cry over losing you as a friend. But I also am going to rejoice over who my God is. Glory to God. Amen. Because when hell starts puking up. Amen. I'm going to get some help from my heavenly father. Somebody say help me. Help me. My God, my God, my God, my God. Yeah, Lord. Help me. I'm all but done. Hallelujah. Then Sennacherib, when you, when you have a resolve in the Lord, uh, Satan's response to your resolve and to my resolve is to try to intimidate you. That's one of Satan's most frequently used and most effective weapons. He'll just try to scare you. Like, it doesn't make sense for you to come up against me. Because it's little old you and big old me. Now, do you really think that you can do anything with me? Here's what he did. It's right in the word. Verses 9 following. After this did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem. But he himself laid siege at, against Lachish and, at, and all his power with him unto Hezekiah king of Judah and unto all Judah that were in Jerusalem saying thus saith Sennacherib king of Assyria whereon do you trust whereon do you trust our folk caught the spirit of the same question or those same words not the whole question but they used to sing a spiritual who said, whose side you leaning on? Some of us criticize them, but them folk had great theology in those old songs. Whose side you lean? And, uh, but here the enemy asks, whereon do you trust that you abide, that you abide in the siege of Jerusalem? You think you're going to make it if, if we come down on you? Doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine, famine and thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hands of the kings of Assyria? Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away high places and his altars and commanded Jerusalem and Judah, saying, We shall worship, ye shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it? Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all people? Of other lands. That's intimidation. Didn't y'all see us just beat up out your neighbors? Didn't you hear about how we ran over this person and we ran and we took all the jewels, we took all the gold and silver? Didn't y'all hear about us? We ain't no joke. Hezekiah got y'all fooled. Talking about the Lord going to take care of y'all. Look around you. Everybody we fought fell down. <laughs> Lord Jesus. 
Were the gods of the nations of those lands any ways able to deliver their hands, their lands out of my hand? Their gods didn't do nothing for them. Lord, help me, Jesus. Well, it tastes pretty good to me. I don't know how it tastes to you, but it tastes all right to me. Amen. Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of my hand? That, that your God should be able to deliver you out of my hand? Intimidation. Like I'm going to beat you up just like I beat him up. Now therefore, let not Therefore, let not Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you in this matter. Lord have mercy. When hell starts puking out, they'll try to get you to not listen to good counsel. <laughs> let not Hezekiah deceive you in this matter, right? Amen. Neither yet believe him, for no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand and out of the hands of my father. How much less shall your God deliver you out of my hand? Intimidation. What the devil will say said to them and what he'll say to me and you is, you can't make it without me. You need my protection. And the same way nobody else could, no other God could protect their people from me, your God can't protect you from me. Amen. That's a pretty hellish time. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, boy. And his servants speak yet more against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. It wasn't that it was bad enough already. They talked some more trash. Amen. Amen. Show yourself up, saints. Show yourself up. Because the enemy will always find somebody who is, who is vulnerable enough to come against you and to say this and to say that. and to Y'all hear what I'm saying? This thing is real. Amen. Hell will come against the saints of the Most High God. Amen. They want to make our witness a lie. And if, they, if we fall for their devices, they will make our testimony a lie. And we will be unable to impact the world for Christ because we have fallen to their intimidation. We beat everybody else and we're going to beat you too. Intimidation. You can't make it without me. What you going to do now? I ain't there to protect you. I ain't there to cover you. I ain't there to make ways for you. You can't make it without me. You need me. But thanks be unto God. God had already said the word. The men of Sennacherib were talking about physical things. They were talking about terrestrial beings they were talking about flesh and blood but Hezekiah already had a view from heaven Hezekiah said he got a lot of men he has the arm of the men but there's more with us than there are with them God got legions of angels. Not only does he have flesh and blood, but he got spirit beings. Thank you, Jesus. I thank the 
Lord. This thing encouraged my spirit. Because sometimes the devil will come after you and after me to intimidate us. But you got to call yourself back. You got to get in that word. You got to seek God's face and look for God to do what he promised. Glory to God. There are more. Now let me let me hurry up and tell you what they did and I'm out. There is a sanctified response to intimidation. There's a holy response to intimidation. You don't ever try to outdance the devil. Because you never beat him at his own games. You hear what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, God got a response for you. And he got a response for me. Let me read verses 20 following. For this cause Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos prayed and cried to heaven. Glory to God. Amen. The response of God when the enemy comes upon you to eat up your flesh Hezekiah and Isaiah did two things. They prayed and they cried out. They prayed and they cried out. There are some things in the flesh you cannot discern. But saints, sometimes all you can do is, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, or oh, whither shall I go? What did thine only son endure before I drew my breath? What pain, what labor to secure my soul from endless death? Offer of faith to thee I lift. My weary longing eyes Oh me I now receive that gift My soul without it dies You got to pray You got to pray You got to pray in the morning You got to pray in the noonday You got to pray in the evening You got to pray when you don't know what to pray You got to pray when you run out of words you got to pray in your prayer language. They prayed. And then they cried to heaven. Help, 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 help. I knew this was going to be a hard part. Because some of us used to not getting out of character. We used to be remaining the quiet person we are. But desperate times call for desperate majors. If this were a normal time, I might sit and be quiet too. But it, the devil is at me just like he's after you. You got to cry out, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I'm leaning and depending on you. I'm leaning and looking to you, God. Now, though you stand and please remain on your feet because you need to help some other people who want to cry out 
but they're ashamed to cry out. I need somebody who's been needing a move of God. You, you need a move of God. Ain't no maybe so. The enemy is ready to run you over. And you know your God is greater. But God gave us two steps to access his power. Amen. Hezekiah and Isaiah did two things. They prayed to heaven. And they cried out to heaven. We need you, God. We need you, God. I'm going to die if you don't help me. I'm going to lose my mind if you don't help me. I'm going to do a dumb thing if you don't help me. I'm weak, but you're strong. I'm ready to respond out of my flesh. I'm ready to go lick for lick. I'm ready to go blow for blow. But I know you got a better way. So I'm praying in the name of Jesus. Move on our behalf. On the name of Jesus, move on our behalf. In the name of Jesus, move on our behalf. I need somebody praying with me. I don't care if it ain't but one more. I need somebody else praying, crying to praying to the Lord. And then after we pray for a minute, we gonna cry out to the Lord. But right now, let's pray. However you pray, pray in the English language. Pray in your prayer language. Pray with your hands lifted up. Pray with your heads bowed. Kneel, you, kneel, you, bend your knee if you got to do it. But pray. Help us, Lord. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Pray, pray, pray. He's coming against your mind, you better pray. He's coming against your health, you better pray. He's coming against your home, you better pray. He's coming against your job, you better pray. He's coming against your money, you better pray. He's coming against your family, you better pray. Yeah, Lord. Pray, pray, pray for the unsaved ones in your family. Pray for the ones who don't want to hear about Jesus. Pray, because the enemy knows if he strikes anybody close to you, he can hurt you. So pray for them. Pray for the ones who say they don't need Jesus. Pray for the ones who don't want to hear the name of Jesus. Pray. In the name of Jesus. Repent of all wrongdoings. We're sorry, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Wash us, Lord. Purge us, Lord. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Have your way, God. Now, when we pray in faith, believing, the word of God calls us to know while we yet praying, he dispatches angels. Not tomorrow. I see now, but while I'm still praying, angels on their way, coming to fight for us, coming to deliver us, coming to protect us. They're already on the way. Glory to God. So when you get done praying, start saying thank you. Thank you, Lord.
My flesh ready to move on, but somebody need a breakthrough. When the Lord was giving me this message, he said some breakthroughs are needed. And if they, if they pray and cry out to me, yeah, I, I already got the answer. I already got angels positioned. I'm ready to dispatch them. I'm ready to send them to rescue my children. I'm ready to send them to fight for my children. I'm ready to send them so that the enemy will know that my children have more on their side than the enemy does. I'm ready, but they got to pray. And they got to cry out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm telling y'all, according to this word, hallelujah, according to this word, heaven, heaven sent help for the hellish time. See now, that, that, that Hezekiah and Judah were fake. They were hellish times. Can you imagine an army bigger than your population coming after you? And the Lord sent an angel. Oh, I see him, and the Lord sent an angel. It's verse 21, y'all. And the Lord sent an angel. Heavenly help for hellish times. And the Lord sent an angel. He didn't have to send a whole legion of them. He sent an angel. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The Lord sent an angel. All we need to fix our situation is an angel. And the Lord sent an angel which cut off all the mighty men of valor and the leaders and the captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. The Lord sent an angel and rendered them useless. So he, so he, he who, Sennacherib, returned with shame of face to his own land. I'm trying to show you what the Lord ready to do for us. He ready to send your enemy back to hell. He ready to send your enemy back to hell, but you can't play with it. You can't play with it. We are no better than those people in Judah during those days. If they had to pray and cry, we got to pray and cry. He sent them back with shame of face his own land. And when he was come into the house of his, of his God, that's the Necherib, came to the house of his God. They that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. Sound to me like his children slew him. Let me tell you something. I, I, I don't often flip into this area, but sometimes things you got to flip into the warfare area. Sometimes you got to get into the warfare area. You, you got to get out the nicey, nicey stuff. Because the devil ain't being nice with you. He, the devil ain't playing fair. You can't say, come on now, devil. Let's sit down and talk. That ain't going to work. Sometimes you got to get into the world. You got to tell God, God, I want you to fight for me. And if you got to kill all of them, kill all of them. Do whatever you got to do to get rid of them folk who trying to get rid of your people. Handle them, God. Handle them, God. Handle them, God. Handle them, God. I ain't going to feel guilty. I ain't going to feel shame. I ain't going to feel less than a Christian. God, they flew up not in my face, but they flew up in your face, God. They tried to make us think that you wouldn't protect us. So whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do to them, it's in your hands. I see. Thus the Lord. Hallelujah. I see now. 
the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord, to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all the nations from henceforth. Glory to God. God and God's people are spared, and the people didn't get self-righteous. The people remembered the God who brought them out. Hallelujah. What shall we then say to these things? If God before us, you, you aren't sounding conceited. You're sounding confident. You, 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 aren't, you aren't wrapped up in yourself. You're just assured. You need to be able to say, God is for me. God, God. Ooh. If God be for us, who? can be against us. If God be for us, who can be against us? The simple conclusion is when we stand with God and folks set themselves up against us, they set themselves up against God. Saints, pray and cry out to God. Don't be ashamed. Don't be reluctant. Pray and cry out. You safe here because I don't need to know your story. I know you. I know your spirit. And I know if you're praying and crying out that you got a reason for it. And I'm going to just join in with you. Glory to God. I don't need to know all the details. You don't need to call me later. You don't need to come by and tell me nothing you don't want to tell me. Amen. Unless the Lord tells you to tell me. Amen. But all I need to know is you in distress and you praying and crying out. And if you're doing it, I'm doing it with you. Pray and cry out for those children today. The wayward children. The children who were taught right but they've begun to follow strange gods. Pray and cry out for those who want your Christmas gifts, but they don't want your Christ. Pray and cry out. Oh, Jesus. I thank the Lord today. I'm expecting, even as I talk now, that angels have been dispatched. And they're already working things out. They're already remedying situations. They're already rendering the enemies of God of no effect. I believe that with all my heart. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And we're not perfect beings, but the Lord knows our hearts. And the Lord knows that he truly can trust our hearts. brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, if we cry out today, if we pray today, virtually, I don't care who is around you in that house, don't wait for them to understand. 
They don't understand where you are right now. They don't understand what's going on with you right now. But pray and cry out. Pray and cry out. And watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Watch God. Watch him minister peace to your spirit. Watch God. Now, I'll do what I don't often do. Because the Lord caused me to know that some of you had particular burdens that you just needed to lay down. So if you feel the need to approach the altar, uh, now is the time. Now is, now is the time. I am so sad. Oh, I so satisfied.
We're also reaching out to those who need to be saved today. Hallelujah. God so loved the world. He so loved, put your name in there. I put my name there. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, you can put your name right, right there. Believing in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. If you need to be saved, come on to Jesus now. Right where you are, whether you're in this building, in your living room, in your office at work, wherever you are, in a hospital room, wherever, he's right there. Lord, I receive you. I receive Jesus as my personal Savior. If you're backslidden, come on back. God never ran you away. Come on back. He's got the same love. He has the same hope for you. And he doesn't have condemnation. He wants you to succeed. Let's come on back. Come on back. If you've not said that if you've not denied the person and the power and the work of the Holy Ghost anything else you've done you can be forgiven praise the Lord if you need to be saved come if you need to come back to the Lord please come now those of us who are bowing for prayer right now here and, and wherever you may be and maybe you're in a place where you can't physically bow but you can bow in your spirit maybe your body doesn't permit you to bow but you can bow in your spirit glory to God amen hear me today we're not praying to see if God will do it We're not, we're not trying to find out if he will. Because he's already let us know he wants to deliver us. He wants to give us the victory. He wants to fight for us. 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 But that means I need to take my hands off that fight. That means I need to shut my mouth up. That means I don't need to cuss back at nobody. That means I don't need to offer insult for insult. That means I need to hold my peace. Because the more I hold my peace, the more the glory of God is going to show forth. You hear what I'm saying? He wants to fight for us. He wants to fight for you and your situation and me and mine. He gives us the opportunity to be corporately built up today. Hallelujah. He gives us the opportunity to acknowledge that we have lots of situations going on where we need heaven's help. We need heaven's help. We can't intellectualize our way out of it can't philosophize our way out of it we need heaven's help for these hellish situations and if we pray if we cry out I tell you according to his word his prevailing peace will come upon us his peace his shalom will come upon us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh my. Now God in the name of Jesus. Here we are. Dust mold. housing 
Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for teaching us that in our weakness you are strong. Thank you for teaching us that you shined brightest in the midst of our frailties. We, like Hezekiah, find ourselves in situations that are too much for us. We find ourselves facing burdens that we cannot bear. We find our minds on overload. Sometimes we catch ourselves just wondering how things will go. Forgive us, Lord. Because we belong to you in all our imperfections and in all our frailties we belong to you God we are believing just the way you set yourself to show up and show yourself strong for Hezekiah and Isaiah that you are postured right now to do the same thing for us. We believe the heavenlies are busy right now with angels descending on assignments to handle my situation that sister's situation and that brother's situation and that boy's situation and that old man's situation and that young lady's situation. God, I believe the heavenlies are buzzing right now because we cry out to you and we pray to you, God, acknowledging that you are the one true God and we, we not only do we not have anywhere else, we don't want to look anywhere else. You have been faithful to us when we have not been faithful to you. You've taken us back when we slipped, just like Hezekiah slipped. When we tried to, to make amends with evil, when we tried to find ways to make evil not treat us evil, And the enemy stole all we had. You were there. But thank you. Since we made up our minds. Come hell or high water. Good times or bad. We were Jesus all the way. Thank you. Thank you since we made up our minds. That we want to hear no other voice but your voice. And we're trusting you to work things out. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your quickening spirit. Thank you for reminding us that the earth is still yours and the fullness thereof. Thank you for reminding us that not a thing can happen on earth. That you are unaware of in heaven. Thank you for reminding us that our problems are your concerns. Thank you for reminding us that you look beyond our faults and you still minister to our needs. Thank you for reminding us that if we pray and if we cry out, you're going to move on our behalf. You will destroy the enemy that comes against us. Thank you right now, God, for turning back the enemy that is fighting us on different hands. Thank you for heaven's help, for hellish situations, hellish conditions, hellish times. Thank you for saving the one that's near as hell and everybody else who will call on the name of Jesus. 
thank you for reclaiming <laughs> everybody who will try to come back home right now. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. God, we're calling. We're calling out the names of loved ones that in our flesh we, we were so flustered we wanted to give up on them. But God, we yet believe in you reaching them, God. If you got to reach in the gutter, if you got to reach way down, if you got to go to skid row, wherever you got to reach them, reach them, God. In the name of Jesus. Rescue them from themselves. Some of them doing well. Some of them in ivory towers and they've forgotten about you. But rescue them from themselves, God. In the name of Jesus. We pray for the elderly mothers and fathers who can't do everything they used to do. But Lord, they've lived, they've lived sacrificially for so long. Bless them and keep them, Lord, that these years, these golden years be their greatest years. In the name of Jesus, we pray for the little children and everybody in between. We pray, Lord, that we remember that Christmas isn't about how expensive the gift is. But Lord, Christmas is just gives us an opportunity to mimic you. When we needed, you gave your best. So when we give to one another, we're just mimicking you. Thank you, God, for all the other needs that I can't even think to say right now. But I know you're working them out. We thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Let's bless God for real now. <laughs>